Hi, we're once again trackside and we're looking at, well, what it takes to make a railroad. Now, American Flyer's a good example of what manufacturers go through. Uh, in their case, they established a gauge of their own and from that point on, they had to make each piece that would work for everybody. So in this case, we're using an example of a lineup. Of course, you have to have a locomotive. And along with the locomotive, box cars, reefers, cattle cars, tank cars, hoppers, gondolas, flat cars, cabooses. Now, what do you do when there just doesn't seem, you seem to be missing something like an express reefer that, that nobody seems to be building right out of the box. Well, that's where kits come in. In any gauge, kits are made and they come in a variety of sizes and skill levels. Um, this is a kit that was left to me and I never assembled, but I'm gonna get around to it now. And these are a wood kit. And I was flabbergasted at this when, when I opened it up. It contains 49 wooden pieces. 22 white metal castings, four, 14 formed brass pieces, two very fine chains with links down approximately one millimeter. It's incredible. There's approximately 10 steps in there somewhere. Um, there were 70 small nails and five lengths of wire. That's like 172 pieces. Quite the piece count for a kit way back when that's, if you get on the internet, they get maligned for being slightly out of gauge or scale. Um, but I'm going to take a whack at it. What I found extraordinary about this kit was that there is a pair of wooden U-channels and L's that are so tiny you would have expected them to have been difficult even to extrude in plastic and yet they are carved in wood. Um, I have no experience in the wood kits, but I'm gonna make a good try in this. Um, oh, the other fun part to this equation was that somewhere in the antiquity of time, the instructions are gone. So we'll have to see how that goes. But fortunately, I have one kit that was actually made to give me a little bit of guidelines. Okay, now to get this show started, I've determined that there is a number of space arrangements that had to be determined. And the end had to be covered. So that's going to be sliced.
holes have been pre-drilled for the tacks to go through as well as holes have been pre-drilled for stirrups all the way around. Now that presented a problem to begin with when you realize that if you've got two stirrups coming at the end, you can't go right in the middle of this thin wood. So one set of holes are high and another set are low. And we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so we've made a little progress. Some of our supports have been tacked in place, uh, tacked and glued into place. The scribed ends have been cut to the dimensions so that they can just go into place. And we also have a lesson in assembly where we now have, with the strips provided, we can figure out why they were there because now, with those two spacers, they line up everything and they provide a space for the stirrups to go in and not, in, not have their height interfere with the shell. And it's one of those things that when you assemble without instructions, you figure out as you go. So we've made a little progress. Some of our supports have been tacked in place, uh, tacked and glued into place. The scribed ends have been cut the dimensions so that they can just go into place okay um, assembly on these pieces is pretty straightforward um, I wasn't quite expecting that the principle of assembly on this wood kit was actually tax. So I'm still augmenting it with some glue. So it's just the old fashioned spreading some conventional wood glue, carpenter's glue around. And in this case, because it's an end piece, you get up the side as well. You put a little on there too. But then you have these tiny tacks which is that you they originally established as your assembly method. And 
wasn't quite prepared for that idea. And then it's a matter of tacking it down. Not very dramatic to see something getting nailed down, so we'll just do it again on the other end. Now, it may be wood, and those who live in a metal and plastic age may feel this is archaic, but it is quite uniform and precise in how it's going together. Okay, timed. Let's see what progress we've made on the kit. The rather colorful arrangement here is obviously the roof where the strapping across the roof had to be cut to length and then glued in place and to hold it down for an expended period of time I used tacks. Um, they've been drying for about a day at this point and then the roof hatches were preliminarily set as is the walkway um, the body has had strapping glued in place Cut to length the straps, a square stock was glued to reinforce the corners, and it's all rather well cured. My only faux pas is that I did the no-no. The foot strapping should have been placed before gluing in place. But that's one of those things you face when building a kit without instructions. <laughs>